This next fly is the Copper John. This is one of the most popular flies in the country and has been for the last six or seven years anyway. It's a somewhat complicated fly in that it has a lot of steps. The steps themselves are not very difficult. Um, it's really a compilation of a lot of different flies that you'll see um, elsewhere on this DVD. To start with, we're going to use a 5262 2X long, 2 extra heavy nymph hook. And onto that hook, I've put a, a gold bead. And in this case, I've used a tungsten bead because it's a little heavier than the brass beads. It's going to get this fly down close to the bottom. We're going to weight this fly with some 15 thousandths lead wire. I'm going to make eight or ten turns. With the tungsten bead, the countersink in the back of the bead is not as deep as it is on a brass bead, so I'm not going to be able to get as many turns of lead wire on this fly as I would with a brass bead. Um, but that will be more than made up for by the tungsten bead that we've got on the front. We're going to use some 70 denier UTC thread in black to tie this fly. It's a flat, smooth thread. It's going to create a nice, smooth underbody for the wire that we're going to wrap over it. The tails will be brown goose biots. The abdomen will be red brassy sized ultra wire. The colors are merely limited by what color wire you have. They're red, green, copper, blue, black, um, any sort of color combination just by changing the wire color. The wing case is going to be made out of two parts. We're going to use a single strand of pearl flashaboo over a narrow strand of black thin skin. We're going to fold that over the top of the thorax which will be made out of strung peacock curl. We're going to make the legs out of a mottled hen saddle feather. And we're going to coat over the top of all of that with a light coat of five minute epoxy. So I'll show you how to mix that when we get to that point as well. So to start with, we're going to get that bead on the hook. And we're going to make eight or ten turns of lead wire. I'll break that wire off flush. And I'll push that wire forward into the back of the bead. That'll center the bead and kind of keep it pinned in place while we tie the rest of the fly. I'm going to take my thread. I'm going to start it just behind the lead wraps. And I'm going to build a little thread dam just going up from the bare hook up to the diameter of the lead. Then I'll continue to wrap forward over the lead to smooth that off a bit and bring the thread back to the bend. I'm going to pick out my two goose biots. I've got a biot from closer to the tip of the feather, and these are going to be a little bit narrower than the feathers at the, the biots at the bottom of the feather. That'll make this a little easier to use on this smaller hook. I'm going to oppose these two biots by turning them back to back so they curve away from each other. And I want to even their tips up a bit so they're as close to the same length as I can get them. I'll measure these about a half a shank length long and transfer these to my material hand. And I'm going to lay these in along the hook with the butt ends on either side of the shank. I'll tilt these just slightly toward me as I take a turn up and over them, but I haven't really applied any tension to this thread. I'm going to let the thread torque twist these biots to the top dead center of the hook shank just by tightening the thread. That's one complete revolution tightening toward me to square those biots up on the hook. Once I've got them where I want them, I'm going to continue wrapping forward over their butt ends up to about where the lead stops. And you can see I want to try to keep that underbody as smooth as I can get as I go forward. So I've trimmed those butt ends off now. And I'll come in with my, my red wire. I'm going to tie this piece of wire in along my near side of the hook. I'll draw it down to length. And I'm going to wrap back over it to the bend, trying to keep the body as smooth as I can as I go. Now once I'm at the tail, I'm going to anchor that down tightly and I'll work forward again. Now I'm going to wrap my wire. As I come up here, I'm going to tilt this wire back so it leans toward the bend of the hook and that'll let that previous wrap guide the next wrap into place. That'll keep me from having any spaces between the wraps of wire. I'm going to wrap forward to just past the 60% point. I'll bring that wire up above the hook, tie it off with a couple turns of thread, and then because it is a little bit heavier gauge wire, I'll helicopter it to break it off rather than using my scissors. So we've got our abdomen built. Now before I go onto the wing case, I'm going to overlap the front edge of that abdomen back to about the 50-50 point on the hook. And that includes the bead. So I'm right about the midpoint on the hook shank. I'm going to take a single strand of that pearl flashaboo. I'm going to lay it in on top of the hook. 
and I want to make sure that this is centered. And I'm going to anchor it down right on top of the fly. Then I've cut just a narrow strip of thin skin. It's just a little narrower than the hook gap. This is going to become our wing case. I'm going to separate it from the paper backing. And I'm going to tie this in with its curve down. You can see there's a slight curve to it. I want to tie this in with its curve down, much like I would a turkey quill wing case. I'm going to lay it flat on top and put my thumb on it. So it will crease around the top of the fly. I want to make sure that it's centered. And anchor that down with several tight turns of thread. Now we're going to build our thorax. The thorax is going to be made out of peacock curl. And you can see we've already got a lot of volume there from the lead wire, the overlapping of the copper wire body, and tying in the wing case. So we're not going to need a whole lot of, of bulk here. So I'm going to take three or four peacock curls. I'm going to square their tips up. And I'll tie these in right at the base of the wing case and wrap down over the stubs. Now I'm going to wrap my peacock curl forward. And you can see it's not going to take a whole lot of turns to build the bulk I need here. I'm going to wrap it right up to the back edge of the bead. And I'll tie that curl off with a couple turns of thread and then trim the stubs down. Now we're on to the legs. Legs on this fly are going to be made out of a mottled hen saddle feather. And what I'll do here is I'm going to strip all this fluff off the bottom of the feather and just discard that. I'm going to draw out a few fibers on one side of the stem so that their tips are even. I'll peel the rest of the feather away and just sort of roll this into a nice little clump, like so. I'm going to lay this in along my far side of the hook. And I want the tips of these fibers to be about even with the hook point. If I drew a line straight up on the far side there, I want the tips of those legs to be about even with the hook point. So I'm going to lay that in. I'm going to press my finger against the side of the hook and come around with a loose turn that I tighten toward me. Get two of them on there to tie those legs in right along the far side of the hook shank. Now I'm going to do the same thing on my near side. So I'm going to come into that same hen feather, draw out a like amount of fibers, bundle them up in the same way, and I'll just measure those against the first clump. If I'm confident that first clump is the right length, I can use this, that as a baseline for the measurement on my second clump. And I'll tie that bunch in on my near side of the hook. So I've got a nice little bundle of legs on either side of the hook shank. Now I want to come in and trim these stub ends out. And we've got lots of little pieces here. So what I'll usually do to trim these is I'll grab the, the butt ends and just roll them to my fingers so they kind of twist up into a rope. That way I can get them all with one shot on the scissors and I don't miss any. Do the same thing on the far side. Now I'm going to fold my wing case forward. I'm going to take that thin skin and I'm going to stretch it just a little bit and tie it down with a couple tight turns of thread. Now I'm going to take my pearl flashaboo and I'm going to try to keep it centered on the wing case and I'll tie it down with a turn or two as well. Now one thing I always do on a flashback like this is once I've anchored it down initially, I'll fold it back again and catch it one more time just to fold that flash underneath there. It makes for a lot more durable flashback. It won't pull out that way. So now I'm going to come in and trim my thin skin. And because we're trimming along the radius of that bead, we need to make two cuts. If you make one straight cut across, you'll have stubs that stick out on either side. So I'm going to make one tight cut up to the center of the bead, and then another tight cut from the center of the bead down on the far side, so I have a shorter stub. I can come in and whip finish, and then I'll trim my flash after I whip finish. I'm going to whip finish my thread right behind the bead, and come in and just nick the flash out of there. Kind of pull my legs off to the side so everything's lined up nice and neat. That looks pretty good. And now we're going to do our epoxy coat. Now a lot of people get intimidated by using epoxy. It's really a pretty simple maneuver and the, probably the best way to do this is to tie a half dozen flies or a dozen or however many you're going to tie and epoxy them all at once. Um, I like five minute epoxy rather than 30 minute epoxy if only for the reason that it's not quite as viscous or not quite as thin as the 30 minute epoxy. I find that 30 minute epoxy um, if you coat the flies and don't have them set absolutely upright it's still thin enough over time where it'll run off the sides of the fly and into the legs. Uh, the five minute epoxy will goop up just quick enough to where it will stay right where you put it. So I like the five minute epoxy even though I have to work in smaller batches. I'm going to take equal parts of both the resin and the hardener. And for just a single fly, it's going to take a tiny little bit of epoxy here. You know, for a dozen flies, you need about two pencil eraser sized dots of epoxy. It's not going to take much. 
So I'm going to try to get as equal amounts as I can here. There's a little trick to mixing epoxy that I'll show you here. I've got two equal sized dots and when I mix this I want to try to keep the needle on the paper so that I don't introduce air and bubbles into the epoxy. This will make the epoxy dry much clearer and it'll go on much smoother because it's not going to settle as I go. So notice as I mix this I'm not lifting the needle off the off of the paper. I'm changing direction every now and again to get a good complete mix out of it, but I'm not lifting the needle off the paper and whipping air into the epoxy. Now I don't typically use my long needle to apply the epoxy. It's just that much harder to do it with a long tool. I much prefer the short tool, so I use the long needle to mix it, but I'll apply the epoxy with the tip of my shorter needle. I'm going to pick up a little glob of epoxy here, and I've got the fly in my vise. I'm going to draw the legs down on either side of the fly. I'm going to put that dot of epoxy right on top of the wing case. And you can see I can kind of work that back and forth, just kind of letting it work off the needle. I want this epoxy to go from the back edge of the bead to the front edge of the wire, on down to the wire. And the reason I want that is it's got to have something to anchor to. That smooth wing case, that thin skin wing case, doesn't really give the epoxy anything to anchor to. So we've got to have some texture for it to bind into. And you can see this epoxy is going to liven up that flash and create a little bulb on top of the fly to imitate the wing case on the real bug. One thing I like to do is make sure I've got the legs kind of pressed back up where they need to go in the event that that epoxy does bleed down. It won't glue them down toward the bottom of the fly. When you put the epoxy on, make sure you get edge to edge and side to side, all, all the way covering the wing case and the thread head behind the bead. But that's the gist of the Copper John. Really not a terribly complicated fly other than that it's got a lot of parts. All simple parts just compiled all into one fly. Give that one a try. That's a great little bug.